fourth time is the charm because I really do not want to film this video for a fifth time. The first time I thought my video was too boring so I tried to include more information. The second time I filmed it I had my ring light on and it was two big circles from the ring light like over my eyes and I looked super creepy. And the third time I realized I had leftover bits of blueberry in my teeth. So fourth time better be the charm. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me over on Instagram as at Jacqueline Salem. If you like videos all about fashion, beauty, lifestyle, sewing, knitting, crafting, then you can subscribe down below to be notified when new videos are uploaded to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you all about the new patterns that I purchased in the McCall's Something Delightful conglomerate pattern sale. I am really hyped up on some of these new things that I got. They do frequently run sales and so I have a running list on my phone of patterns that I really like and then whenever they have that sale then I like refer to that list to go back and see which ones I want to purchase to sew in the upcoming months. So I have a little stack here to show you with some fabric ideas that I have in mind and let's get into the video. The first one is a dress by McCall's. It's M7946. It is this really beautiful kind of peasanty style dress that has um, elasticated portions on the waist and options for long sleeve, short sleeve, strap sleeves, or no sleeves at all. There are gathered tiers added to the skirt as options. It's just like a really cute, very of the now dress. And it is perfect, absolutely perfect for beginners. So if you are just starting to sew, this is from their Learn to Sew for Fun level two series, but this would be an amazing first project for you to dip your toes into sewing. That being said, the finishes, uh, well, the finishing techniques that they have in the pattern are really not the kind of finishing techniques that I really like. So I've deviated quite a bit from this pattern. I've already started sewing it because I have an inspiration project from, I believe the original dress is from Free People. Um, I'll leave a picture on the screen for you to look at. And I've started duping that dress because I really, really loved it in this cotton double gauze that I purchased from Blackbird Fabrics. So I've deviated a little bit from the pattern. As you can see, I've added the flounce. I've shirred the entire uh, bodice, which shirring is not part of this. It's done with elastic. But shirring was super, super fun, really easy, and I'm loving the results so far. I still need to add a skirt to it, but I think this would be adorable just as a top. So I hope I have enough fabric left over just to make a top. And I might even leave this one as a top and make a different dress later on. So this is my current work in progress based on this McCall 7946. I think it would be great in a variety of fabrics. So just things like basic quilting cotton would be super cute. Um, rayon chali I think would be adorable and have that really nice fluid drape or rayon poplin, viscose poplin. Any of the rayon viscose blends are gonna give you a super nice flowy dress that will be perfect in the summertime. Chambray, could you imagine this in a chambray? Yeah, so again, that's 7946. The next pattern that jumped into my cart is McCall's 7962, and I purchased it specifically for these bodice patterns right here. This one kind of has this ruched, kind of gathered bodice in the center, and I love this one with like the flounce that travels to the bottom of the bodice over the shoulder cap. It also comes with these other options for a sleeved top, and then for these kind of gaucho style wide leg pants and shorts options. So there's a lot that comes in this pattern. I purchased it because I've had this dress idea in mind for ages. I love this dress from Doen. I forget what the name of the dress is, but I know the company is called Doen. I'll put a picture on the screen. And I've been looking for patterns that would be good to dupe this dress in. So with that in mind, I purchased this crepe, polyester crepe fabric. Um, and by the way, all of the patterns and fabrics that I mentioned will be linked in the description box below. So don't worry about like taking notes or anything like that. You can find it all down there. This is a polyester crepe fabric that I wanted to use to be a muslin for this pattern and for my dupe of the Doen dress. And then I have this gorgeous 
textured tensile viscose from Blackbird Fabrics. It's really, really soft, fluid drape, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but it does have this really nice little texture on it. This one's from Blackbird, it's in a white shade. I think it's gonna be so beautiful. I hope it doesn't look too much like a wedding dress by the time I'm done with it, but I really do love this fabric and this pattern. So that's what I'm gonna use to uh, make this dress with, is this right here, and then I'll just add a, a half circle skirt or something to the bottom of it. But for this option B, oh my gosh, how cute would that be in just like a small floral print? So maybe again, like a viscose poplin or a rayon chalet. Um, this is a quilting cotton right here, although I do have this earmarked currently to be the nap dress. I forget what company it is that makes the nap dress, but it's basically a shirred bodice with straps attached to it and this kind of like straight skirt that is added onto it. So yes, I really have this in mind for that, but a small scale floral print with that flounce bodice, how cute would that be? So again, that's McCall's 7962. Next up in my cart was the Butterick 5792 pattern, and it's just this really gorgeous collection of floaty, comfy nightgowns. I particularly love this one right here that's kind of the long nightgown with the gathered tier on the bottom of it. I think it's really just floaty and beautiful, and so I have this uh, textured or crinkled cotton voile that I purchased from fabric.com to make that with. It's just gonna be really floaty and pretty. So that's kind of the idea I have for that. But it also comes with, you know, several other options. There's a top and pants, different lengths of nightgowns, sleeveless, long sleeve. So there's really a bunch of options for this nightgown in terms of style. And really you can make it with just about anything that feels comfortable to sleep in at night. The next pattern that I purchased is McCall's 8150. It is a elasticated waistband skirt that has several gathered tiers and it has options of doing anywhere from two to four tiers. The two tiered skirt version has this ruffle along the bottom of it. Super pretty. I did buy this with an intended project in mind and that was to use my gorgeous beaded couture lace from Minerva to make an amazing gathered tier skirt. I have since delegated this fabric to other plans, so I'm not gonna be doing that anymore, but I am so glad I purchased this pattern because I have other inspiration pictures saved in like my Pinterest and my Instagram that feature similar style skirt bottoms attached to a bodice of a dress, so I am really excited to have this pattern and know I will use it. I think it would be amazing in something like a linen fabric this linen fabric was purchased in the garment district, so I can't link it exactly, but it, I'm sure you can find something similar if you just search linen on fabric.com or your uh, fabric uh, supplier of choice. I think it would be so great in something like a rayon poplin or rayon chalet because the fluidity of the drape would just blow amazingly in that like summer breeze. And then I also pulled this one, which is similar to like a shirting material. I want to say it's like a poplin of some sort, but maybe rayon or viscose mixed in with it. But it has these beautiful embroidered flowers on it. How pretty would that be in this skirt? So this one is really just so versatile. I think I would probably nix the elastic waistband and add like a regular waistband to it and then attach it to a bodice, like I said, to make a dress. I just had a thought. What if you took something like a chiffon fabric and then used that for it and it would just be this beautiful billowy chiffon tiered skirt? That would be so amazing. I love this idea. But anyway, I'm just really excited about this pattern. 8150 from McCall's. Super versatile. I think a lot of different fabrics would work for this. The next pattern is McCall's 7906. It's this really pretty button up pleated skirt. I normally do not go for patterns that are gathered or pleated at the waistline because I'm a pear shape. I don't really want to further emphasize a part of my body that is out of like average or typical proportions, but I made an exception for this pattern because the pleats are sewn down sewn closed over the hips and then they are left open at the bottom of the skirt to get that really nice fullness at the bottom of the skirt. So I do think this is one that could work really well for pear shapes, so I'm really excited to give it a try. 
I love how transitional this piece would be too. It would really kind of would be great for any time of year, to be honest. Not that I pay so much attention to seasonal clothing because I just wear like turtlenecks underneath strapped tops or tights or something with my shorter skirts, but this one is really nice for those transitional wardrobes. I think it would work really well for both summer and fall. And I just love the style of it. So as for fabrics that I think would work well for it, so much again something like a chambray a linen tinsel twill though i think would be fantastic for it this is one i have in my stash from picnic house supply it is their tinsel twill in the cape breton color it's so buttery so soft i really love this fabric and i also think it's possible that corduroy could look good in it as long as the corduroy was lightweight enough i think because there's so much pleating again at the waistline i wouldn't go for a corduroy that's super super thick because it's just going to add more bulk to the waist but i really like the idea of using a lightweight corduroy although this one's already earmarked for the pauline alice rosary skirt so i know what i'm going to be using this one for but i do really like this pattern i don't have a specific like fabric in mind for it yet, but I have a really beautiful fabric stash right now, so I'm sure I'll be able to find something that will work really well for this pattern. And again, something that you could add like a bodice to and make like a really pretty dress out of this, a really versatile and usable pattern. The next two patterns are definitely gonna be polarizing. You're either going to love them or you're gonna hate them. Because I knew when I bought these patterns, I really love them, but I told Andrew, you're not gonna like them. And he was like, yep, you're right. <laughs> So I'm sure this will be very polarizing. This is McCall's 7838. And look at these amazing sleeve options that come with this garment. I'll show you the back right here. We've got like this flutter sleeve here with like a little gathered part at the upper arm. This gathered here for like a puff at the bottom on the forearm. This like puff shoulder up here, another shorter flutter sleeve. There's just so many really great options. Now when it comes to patterns that are sort of louder like this, I tend to pick like quieter fabrics to kind of balance out the two things. So if I have a loud pattern, I'll pick a quiet fabric. If I have a loud fabric, I'll pick a quieter pattern. It just kind of helps integrate the piece more seamlessly into my wardrobe. But I really, really love this uh, right here as it's shown in like the white cotton shirting. So I brought one of those over here to show you. I just think that would be fantastic for it. For a pattern like this, I really don't think I want anything with too much drape because if it's too drapey, maybe for this one, it would be okay because then it would just kind of drape and flutter around on the bottom of the sleeve. But anything that you want to like keep that structure, you're gonna want something that has less drape in the fabric. So things like cotton poplins, cotton lawns, uh, quilting cotton even would be, I think the best choice for those ones that you kind of want to retain the structure. So this is a white cotton shirting fabric. This one again is another cotton poplin. I love this like periwinkle, not really periwinkle, I guess it's more like a lilac color. Love that one. I think something like this window pane check shirting fabric would be amazing. So you get the idea. I think those kinds of fabrics are gonna be great for this pattern. And this is 7838 from McCall's. And then the next one in a similar vein is from Vogue. It's 1704. It comes with this top pattern and this pants pattern. And I just think these sleeves are absolutely amazing. They've got a seam on the upper part of the sleeve, which I just think is really cool. Again, I think this Vogue pattern is gonna be perfect with similar fabrics that I mentioned in the McCall's pattern. So I brought a few more over here to show you. This beautiful rose printed quilting cotton. I think a Swiss dot would be fantastic. This one's an indigo Swiss dot and this one's got embroidery on it. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but I love that one. And then I've had this fabric sitting in my stash for a little while and I purchased it with a specific project in mind, but I did not know when I purchased it that it has this crinkle texture to it, which made it not suitable for the pattern I was wanting to make it for. So I think it would be pretty cool though in one of these tops this kind of gingham check fabric i really like that and then last but certainly not least i purchased two corset patterns so you might think that corsets are a little bit 
wild, but I really, really love them when mixed with like more subtle pieces in my wardrobe. Like I love wearing them under white shirts or button up shirts. I love wearing them with really simple skirts and like a cardigan on top. I just really, really like corsets. I have two from a ready to wear brands in my wardrobe as it is. So I purchased these two patterns because I was very inspired by Lindsay of the Stitch Fits on Instagram. She posted the most beautiful floral print corset that she made and I loved it so much. The pattern that she used was from a YouTuber named Nava Rose. Nava Rose put out this free pattern for a corset but it's only in the one size that she is and the Nava Rose YouTuber is a lot smaller than me and I have like no experience with pattern grading really so I decided I would just try to buy some patterns to make it happen rather than trying to grade the uh, free pattern that was available on YouTube. And I have this amazing fabric that I picked up from Stone Mountain and Daughters. It's this coveted poppy linen fabric. I absolutely love it. I only bought a yard of it because it was pretty expensive. So a corset pattern is really, really perfect for that. So why did I purchase two? This pattern right here has a lot more pieces on it. I think there's like somewhere in the realm of like six to eight pieces just for the front, whereas this one only has three pieces on the front of it. And I got nervous, I guess, when I like the style of this one a lot, although I do like the sleeves on this one. This one is Butterick 5935, and this one is McCall's 2034. I like the more pieced corset, um, but I got nervous though that with so many pieces it would obscure the print on the fabric with such a large scale print that you wouldn't see enough of it. So I kind of think some sort of hacking between the two of these might be in order. Like I really like this one but I think I want a center seam so I'd add like a center seam to that. So I'm gonna do some sort of pattern mashing between the two of these. I'm really excited to sew this. This has been on my bucket list for a while, and by a while I mean a few months, but I'm really excited to use this fabric because I fell in love with it the moment I saw it, and now that I have a pattern in mind, I'm excited to get going on that. And that is it for my pattern haul. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video down below if you enjoyed it. It helps other people find it in YouTube's algorithm, and like I said, you can subscribe down below to see more videos. I will see you in the next one. Bye!